Hi there, my name is Graham Thompson and I work for Avnet on the independent software team. I am the solution design specialist on Red Hat in the UK and I've recorded this presentation just to give my take on Red Hat JBoss middleware, what I believe the portfolio to be comprised of, uh, what I believe it does and what I believe the components of the solution do to deliver an enterprise class middleware solution. So quick agenda, I'm going to go through what middleware is, um, a bit about the history of JBoss itself as a product line uh, prior to Red Hat's involvement. I'm going to have a look at Red Hat's JBoss middleware portfolio and what they've done with it, how they break it down into three areas, a touch on the competition, keep it quite light on that bit. Um, and then just finish off with a bit about why you should look at Red Hat and Red Hat's JBoss solution. Pretty similar arguments that the, that you would look at for choosing Red Hat in the first place against community-driven open source projects. Should take about 20 minutes to get through. Uh, hopefully get through at a good pace. If you've got any questions for me, feel free to put them in the comments section or email me if you've got my email address and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. So what is middleware? Well, uh, my understanding of middleware uh, is that it's a software glue, or often referred to as plumbing, which allows pieces of software to communicate with each other. So that can be an automatic communication rather than having to have a manual process where a user has to go into one system, pull data out, and then push data into another system. Middleware sits in the middle and it does a lot of that for you. It brokers messages between applications and makes the whole thing work nicely, work seamlessly. And you might in some environments have a front end which talks to middleware, which in turn talks to your back end systems to pull information you need together. Uh, a little example, a little graphic below shows a client computer talking to the middleware solution, which in turn talks to e-commerce systems, database systems, CRM systems, and pulls all that information together so that users can get access to the information they need without having to involve IT all the time, which lends itself to a service oriented architecture where you empower users, I suppose, to do what they need to do themselves. A bit about JBoss itself as a, as a project, as a community project. It was started in 1999 uh, by Mark Fleury, uh, originally called EJB OSS, which is Enterprise Java B and Open Source Software. And I've done a bit of reading, and I think there was another piece of software around at the time which had a very similar name. So it got changed to JBoss, or abbreviated to JBoss, uh, and became the JBoss Group. LLC in 2001 and then Red Hat came along in 2006 and bought it for 420 million a snip if you ask me around the same time Oracle tried to buy it for around 400 million to, well they didn't win Red Hat won happy days for Red Hat so the Red Hat JBoss middleware portfolio as it stands today this will change because it's constantly getting bigger different things get pulled in but the way they market it, split it up, is this automate, integrate, and accelerate. So for me, the main bit that, that follows the, if you like, the definition of middleware is the integrate bit in the middle. So integrate deals with the integration of existing legacy applications and how they interoperate with new systems and how users can use them. The components within the acceleration or accelerate piece speed up the way the infrastructure operates. These can replace existing applications which don't run as fast with newer, high-performant Red Hat JBoss middleware components. And the automate bits at the top deal with quite high-level consultation, not necessarily IT-specific consultation with organizations who are looking to identify their business rules and processes and formalize them so that using that formalized information, they can design IT systems to better support them as a business. Okay, so Automate, as I mentioned, it's high level, contains JBoss BRMS and Red Hat JBoss BPM Suite. So Red Hat JBoss BRMS, it's a business rules management software. And, and, and the principal idea behind BRMS is to extract the logic, the facts, the rules, the processes and events that organizations run by and are, are run on and it's designed to capture that business logic and and get it formalized get it into a system 
where these rules can be looked at, analysed. For example, a commission-based position within an organisation, the rule would be if Joe Bloggs doesn't hit his sales target, he won't get his commission. If he does hit his sales target, he does get his commission. Very, very simple, straightforward example. But it's that sort of thing. It's formalising that sort of that sort of rule. It's built on Jules, which is the upstream open source source for JBoss BRMS. And it includes something called complex event processing, which allows you to look at and analyze huge amounts of information over time periods and look for patterns, emerging patterns in huge amounts of information. So the whole idea behind BRMS is to get it, get you away as a business from the headache that can accompany a traditional software development life cycle. So in a traditional environment, you might have a business that, that think they need a new application. So you've not captured the business rules. You've just thought we've got a certain application that doesn't work for us very well. I know we'll go out and get a new application that'll do what that does, but a bit better. So if you don't look from the top down in an organization and capture the rules and the reasons and the rationale behind doing what you do, you can get yourself into a position where you're having to prop up your organization's IT by shoehorning applications into your architecture, which may not be fit for purpose in the long term to really support your organization. They might temporarily fix IT problems, but not necessarily fix organizational issues or organizational problems. So you can get yourself into a position where you bring in your application in, you hire a development team or set of developers to come in and develop an application for you. Use it for a bit happily, no problem for a while. Then you identify that you need to tweak this application because it never really fit your organization in the first place. So you get your developers back in, they redevelop, fix the application, tweak it to make it do what you want it to do. That might undermine the original rationale for the application. This happens two or three times or over a period of time. And then the application changes to the extent that the business can't manage it. It doesn't any longer fit the business and you have to go out and develop a new application again. And it's this sort of continual cycle of unimprovement uh, that you're trying to get rid of and trying to get away from. So you've also got JBoss BPM suite. This is the business process management suite and it's built upon BRMS. It includes BRMS um, as well as advanced business process management tools and a runtime environment and allows users who deal with business processes to develop applications without having to be able to necessarily program for them. So you've got your rules. BPM suite will let you put these processes in place on a software level to enact and enforce those rules. So BRMS formalizes your rules. BPM suite allows you to do all the bits within BRMS and generate the processes to enforce the rules and the platform to run the environment. Move on to the integrate stack. Three products in here. Red Hat JBoss Fuse, Red Hat JBoss AMQ, and Red Hat JBoss Data Virtualization. These are all individual subscriptions, same as on the Automate piece. These are the, the broken down into the individual subscriptions you can buy from Red Hat, uh, depending on your business's requirements. Red Hat JBoss Fuse, it's, a, it's an enterprise service bus. So it's a software model for designing and implementing communication between interactive applications. It passes messages around. Um, it's built on Apache CXF, Camel, and AMQ to provide reliable messaging, web services, integration frameworks, and it can all run on RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat JBoss AMQ, it's a standards-based messaging platform, also known as MOM or message-oriented middleware, and it allows for the passing of messages between applications. This is why I said before that these bits are what I view as the actual middleware bits, the bits that allow software to talk to software. So think of AMQ as a message queuing service. You might have two applications, application A, application B. Application B might be a lot slower than application A in doing what it does. So you stick AMQ in the middle. AMQ can hold on to those messages from application A, queue them up, and then deliver them to application B when application B is ready for them. Very scalable, very lightweight, uh, written in Java. So it can all run on RHEL, it can run on Windows, anything that can run Java. Red Hat JBoss Data Virtualization. This is um, designed to work with uh, disparate 
databases and data sources. It allows you to pull data from lots of different sources into one pool, which can then be queried. So it treats many, many different data sets as one large data set uh, or one large service. So the Accelerate piece, the final piece, if you like, contains the Red Hat JBoss Enterprise Application Platform, Data Grid, Web Server, Mobile Application Platform, a Developer Studio, and John or JBoss Operations Network. So EAP is the market lead in open source Java Enterprise Edition Server. This is the platform you run your applications on. It allows for fast application development. It allows you to run this on Red Hat OpenShift. So this could be your platform as a service. It supports full web profiles and full profiles and has support for elastic scalability. So it can scale dramatically as your business needs it to. DataGrid is an in-memory distributed database. So it uses RAM in hardware, in servers for distributed caching rather than having to rely on slow hard disk drives. It takes advantage of the uh, inherent performance benefits within RAM. Red Hat JBoss Web Server, lightweight version of EAP, built on Apache uh, and Apache Tomcat, and it processes HTTP and HTTPS requests. The Red Hat JBoss mobile application platform, this came from the acquisition of Feed Henry a couple of years ago. Feed Henry remains the upstream open source project. So the latest and greatest developments, the bleeding edge tech goes into Feed Henry and Red Hat take that tech, they harden it, stress test it, make it enterprise ready and make it supportable. It allows developers to generate web applications for mobile. There's form-based menus. It's all web-based. You host it in the cloud and it allows you to very, very quickly generate applications and deploy them to mobile phones and mobile devices. Okay, so to support the, the portfolio, there's also a Red Hat JBoss Developer Studio designed to help developers build and test applications. It's an all-in-one compiler, test and dev environment for developers. For administrators, you've got Red Hat JBoss Operations Network, or John, and it provides system administrators with a view of, of all the available JBoss resources on their, on their infrastructure, in their environment. And it allows administrators to, to view what's going on, keep track of applications, make sure things are up and running when they're supposed to be. You know, it's a traffic light system, green light, everything's fine, yellow light, you've got something to look at, red light you've got some systems down you need to you need to do some work and that's really the stack uh, the portfolio as I understand it I've tried to keep this high level I'm not going too deep on anything just just buzzing through it to give you an overview competition to Red Hat's middleware portfolio I suppose it's really there's two branches to that there's the community projects themselves so the upstream source projects which Red Hat actually invest in as their almost test and dev environment you know, some organizations look at those upstream projects and think, you know, we, we, these are good enough for us. We can support these ourselves internally. We want the bleeding and cutting edge features. So we're going to go with the community projects. The downside to a community project is that it's got not necessarily got any support or SLAs associated with it. No guarantees of compatibility necessarily with other pieces of software. That's generic. I mean, there might, there might be specific examples that do support and have, you know, benchmarks in place. Many projects in the open source or community upstream projects run six month development cycles and move on. So new features come in very fast, but not, might not be uh, necessarily stress tested as far as it could be. Red Hat take a lot of that headache away for you because they do that themselves. They, they take the community projects, they take the secure bits, they take the bits that work and they know work, they harden them, they make them supportable and then they sell subscriptions for that service. Community projects are one source of competition the other is Microsoft IBM Oracle uh, Tibco your, your big proprietary vendors um, the downside to these guys is that they're typically very very expensive um, they have upfront contracts uh, can be long term you know you can get locked into a, a long-term contract for hardware and software with some of these platforms from what I've seen typically JBoss from Red Hat is significantly cheaper so why look at Red Hat JBoss? A lot of the same reasons you'd look at Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Rev or any of the other products in the, the Red Hat portfolio. It's open source, which means it's open choice. You can walk away at any time. There's no there's no lock-in. Red Hat pay for the support in terms of financially and in terms of engineering resource, the upstream community who then feed back into Red Hat uh, you know, six to nine months after with 
with new technology new revisions and new pieces of software it's enterprise class there's enterprise support with it you know, whether you want standard support or premium support there's a red hat support option there for you it's all stress tested it's all guaranteed to work and it's it's far far more cost effective than looking at the the competitors looking at the competition and that's it that's the end of the presentation i hope you found that a little bit useful as an introduction to red hat jboss middleware if you've got any questions please feel free to send me a comment